everybody in this Zoom knows about the story of Purim, the story of uh, what happened with Haman. And basically the whole thing was, you know, it, it went down to the wire. You know, and, and then everything turned flipped on its head and, 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 and we won. And uh, we know that Haman is a descendant of Amalek, right? And interesting, you know, I was just telling Frank this yesterday that Amalek spelled in Hebrew, the letters in Amalek, in Hebrew, um, the name Kamala has the same letters, literally the same letters, just different vowels. And so if you think about how Kamala even, you know, how Hashem allowed her to be elevated, literally with no merits and no anything, no reason, no merits, no, no, nothing, a hollow shell. You realize that it's from him and you realize that it's, it's a test of our muna of our of our faith mm -hmm. and you realize that it's it's there to instill doubt the word um amalek the name amalek has the same gematria 240 numerical value as the word sofek in hebrew which is doubt she's just here to 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 bring doubt mm. and everybody else who's attached to her mm. and the way you destroy that is you you pray you pray you you uh do what you need to do physically like in this case you vote you tell you tell others people around you to vote i mean you see i think uh 50 or more openly at least i, I i'm sure there's more um both in america and in israel 50 or more big rabbis have supported endorsed trump I don't think this has ever happened. Israeli rabbis who don't vote in American elections can't even speak English, barely, hardly. Have endorsed Donald Trump. They give him a, they they've given him a bracha. It's not just a political endorsement. It's a it's a blessing. Now I'm not going to speak about what they said about you know injecting yourself. Some of them said yes. Some of them said no. Some of them. I'm get, for now, I'm going to set that aside, but but this has never happened. Just like you mentioned Lakewood. People don't like to, people in the Orthodox world, they don't like to advertise so much these things in, in, in public. You know, they kind of keep to themselves um, with many things, but this is big. I mean, they, they were driving around their neighborhoods with trucks, you know, screaming in Yiddish. You know, uh, songs in Yiddish. Vote for Trump. Vote for Trump. Wow, this is this is I like heard that. This is unheard of. Yeah, in Williamsburg, in Brooklyn, Lakewood, also in Muncie, you know, Rockland County, upstate New York. Just these trucks are driving around yet in Yiddish. Sorry, just one second. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um. This is, uh, you know, so this is really about, this really comes down to, I hate I hate to be sound ethnocentric, this comes down to the Jews. How, how the Jews vote and how the Jews uh, understand what's going on here, the rest of America is going to follow it, spiritually, physically. This really, why do people always ask, who cares about the Jewish vote? What are we, like, 2 million people or something like that mm -hmm. in America? I don't know, 5 million people? I don't, I don't know. Right. Small number. Tiny number of America. Who cares? What, are we going to sway some election in some blue state, dumb blue state? Yeah. <laughs> Not only in one state, in the whole country. Why do they, why do people lobby us? Yes, yes. We have influence, yes, yes. For better or worse, we have influence. Somebody just wrote canary in the coal mine. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we donate to campaigns to politicians. Uh, 
Yes, you want that donation. You want that support. You want that endorsement. You want that bracha, the blessing. So we're here to defeat Amalek inside of us. We're here to defeat Amalek. You know, the, I was just telling Frank yesterday, The and a friend of mine was asking me, you know, he he's not really a political person. Another friend of mine, he's like, you're talking to me about these these wokes, you know, the woke. It's five to ten percent of the people in this country. They're a marginalized group. I'm like, well, I got news for you, man. The marginalized group, the group suppo that's supposed to be marginalized, runs the media, mm -hmm. runs, um, you know, how corporate policy is uh, formed, you know, ESG, mm -hmm. DEI, all this stuff. So they've captivated the the spirit of the country somehow through some demonic spell mm -hmm. and i was saying that 20 years ago these people were standing on a particular corner of a particular neighborhood in manhattan and that was known as their place and that's where we understood that that's where they should be and and okay so they're like that's where they are and everything's okay you know but he, you know we don't hate them. They don't hate us. That's where they are. Okay. Now they're running the show. Who allowed them into normal society? Mm -hmm. Who allowed them next to our children? Who allowed them into schools as teachers, as, I don't know, principals of schools? You know, the, the, the heads of the Department of Education or particular county or town or city. Who allowed this? If I went to sleep 20 years ago in a cryogenic chamber and woke up today, I would I would literally lose my mind. Have you guys ever seen the movie Demolition Man? You know, he woke up and the, you know, the Sylvester Sloan, they thought he was a troglodyte. He, they thought he was a caveman. He was like, are you guys insane? You know, they had like these, uh, you know, the seashells and the whatever. You have to watch the movie. I mean, it's like funny, but it's not funny. You think about it. It's madness. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, I, I talked to some of some Jewish people and uh, and, uh, and they're talking to me about Trump and he's a you know, secular Jews mostly. He's a convicted felon, he's this, he's that. Folks, you know. I, I'm gonna say this, you know, I said this to Frank yesterday. If he did anything with ladies in his life. And if he did anything in business in the gray area in his life, and if he had anything to do with any shady people in his life in business, mm -hmm. you know what he didn't do? Ever? Not as far as I know. He never worshipped Satan. Mm -hmm. He did all those things that I just mentioned, but he never worshipped mm -hmm. Satan. And the people that are accusing him of all those things, you know what they do? They worship Satan. You know, like I go to Lahav deal, like I go to, well... When I go to shul on Shabbat, when I go to synagogue on Shabbat, they go wherever they go, whatever day they have designated during the week or some random day, and they worship Satan. They have like altars, and they have a whole, you know, as we call it, seder, seder, mm -hmm. you know, the pr procedure, procedure, and they worship the Satan. Folks, I mean, mm -hmm. I hate to say this, any Jew much less non-Jew, anybody really. If you vote for this woman, you're gonna you're literally gonna have to answer to Shemayim, to heaven. Mm. And unlike in unlike on you know in this world where we don't really have a proper um justice system where you can kind of you know you can plea bargain, you have the right judge, the right lawyer, enough money, you can get off mm. with God, with God. Everything is, mm -mm. there's just truth. He has every, he has, he has the videotape. So, and you can't say you didn't know. It's called Hayav mm -hmm. Misa in Hebrew. Hayav Mita, obligated for death. So, yeah. we're fighting a Amalek, and I hope, I really hope that just like in the story of Purim, everything flips on its head at the last second. You know, everybody's going to be like, oh my God, we don't know. And then at the last second, 
because because we can't take this anymore. Hashem, we can't take it. We can't we can't take it anymore. No. It's unbearable. It's unbearable. I was watching a video with Rabbi Kesson the other day, and he was talking about the elections, and he said something very similar to what you just said, that whoever we vote for, we're going to be judged because it's not just for that person that and their evil ways, but it's what hmm. that person is doing that will cause, bring evil to other innocent people. It's not just one election with one person because that one person is going to affect the downfall of many. And I hadn't thought about that. We're, it is overwhelming and it is, I mean, I'm sure we all can testify to the fact that as we're praying and we're asking Hashem to show mercy, of course we deserve his judgment, but we can't, we can't take it anymore. We can't go down this path. It will not be good. And I do, Zvi, just like you do, I pray that this has a poor outcome, that there will be celebration and there will be dancing, that Hashem will show mercy, but we can't go back to the way, if he does, we cannot go back to the way that we were. I loved what you said about the people that were on a corner and we know we didn't share their values and they were in that, that's where they were and that was their neighborhood and that's where they stayed and that's fine. But then we woke up and they were in control of every aspect of our lives. And so much so that they were so smart. I hate to even say that that they went after our kids. They went after the next generation. And our kids, many of our kids have bought into the lies. Our kids are being destroyed because of these policies that these elected officials have adopted. It's one of the reasons why we've been so focused on school board races because the local school board holds the keys to the future mindset of the next generation. We have an opportunity. God willing, tonight is gonna to be that night. To turn the, turn the tide again turn this nation back. You know, I think back to the time when they removed prayer from schools and it wasn't until the Rebbe called for prayer to happen in the classroom, non-sectarian, a, a moment of silence. He understood we have to bring our country back. And even when he pursued that belief, he knew that it had to be gradual. We couldn't just say prayer. It had to be a moment of silence. He was trying to turn us back even then. He understood the impact, what that impact would have in removing prayer removing recognition from Hashem, from the Almighty. And now we've got to try to continue to further that legacy. And we, we're we getting there. Like I said, we've got another hearing coming up in 
It's either going to be later this month or it's going to be December in Washington, D.C. with Virginia Fox, who is the chairwoman of the House Education and Workforce Committee. She's going to be holding hearings on the curriculum, the textbooks, the instructional materials that are being used in the classrooms, the library books that our children are being subjected to, and also the people that are funding them. We have to expose and uncover what has been hidden in secret and bring it into the light to make more people aware that it's not just the DEI and the CRT, it's the pornography, it's the anti-Semitism, it's anti the American values. Lori, you mentioned uh, the, the Rebbe and prayer in schools. I don't know if anybody remembers a couple of years ago, actually, it's not a couple, it was when President Trump was in his first term, uh, there was a shooting in a Chabad in Poway, California, mm. and the mm. rabbi who had his finger shot off mm. was invited to CNN to, to, you know, to speak to Anderson Cooper. And somebody asked in the chat, how do you know they worship Satan? A perfect example. Mm. This Rabbi Goldstein, I want to say, he started speaking about exactly what you, you just spoke about. He mentioned how the Rebbe said that you know there should be a moment of silence in the beginning of this school day so children can contemplate their you know God and, and themselves and their and their souls and their existence. And as he was saying that, Anderson Cooper, who is the I guess the grandson of a Vanderbilt, of Vanderbilt, his mom is a Vanderbilt. Mm. And they and there's a famous photo of Anderson Cooper and his mom and his brother. And above them is is like this, or behind them is a painting of something I don't even want to mention, some ritual. And this Anderson Cooper, as the rabbi is speaking about this, he his face looked like it was going to peel back. Mm. Or, I don't know, collapse on itself. He just looked like he was going to puke over the screen. These wow. people, These people cannot listen to anything about God. They cannot listen to anything about the Torah. They can't, they can't, they can't. Just like we can't, you know, with, mm -hmm. with them, they can't with God. Mm -hmm. That's why, and that's why they hate Israel. That's why they don't want Israel to win. That's why they want, they want, or, you know, at best they want Israel to proportionate response. Mm -hmm. Don't go to Rafa. Don't do this. Don't do that. Settler violence. Mm -hmm. Who are the settlers? Settlers. Mm -hmm. These are people who believe in God, and they they've 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 they they live in the land of God, Judea and Samaria. They hate God. <laughs> they hate if they hate and and if they hate God, they hate us. Right. It's very element, and and on top of that, then they then they turn it around and they say no, and they accuse their opponent of of you know it's like this smoke and mirrors. Their opponent is the one that hates Jews. How can you? Know, Obama came out two days ago. How can you vote for this guy who said, uh, you know, the, the, the old canard that's already been debunked ten thousand times? Right. It's it's because they they must. They have no nothing else. They they must. Because if they get the Jews, that means they've they've captured, like, mm -hmm. the spiritual power. Mm -hmm. If they captivate our minds, that's it. It's over. I mean, God forbid, but they, they they won't obviously. But they know. The Satan told them, if you got if you get these guys, dude, these are the guys to get. Forget about all these, you know. These are the guys. That's right. You talked about, you know, uh, the importance of the Jewish vote and the impact that Jews have on society, and that's why that's why they're targeting the Jews, because they know if Hashem actually starts, or Hashem's people, if the Jews actually start following, living 
Torah to the world, to the nations, what will that do? The nations will follow because we know the prophets were told that in the last days, 10 men from the nations will come and grab hold of the seat seat of a Jew and say, we want to go with you. They may be a small percentage of all of humanity, but they carry 100% of the responsibility or the, um, the keeping of Torah, the way to follow the one true God of the universe. That's why the enemy doesn't want Israel to achieve her goal, her mission to all of humanity. Laura, you mentioned Rabbi Kesson to what you just said. To, you know, you mentioned Rabbi Kesson before. Rabbi Kesson says, you know, why, why are these people convinced that, uh, or why, why is Donald Trump attacked so much? Because if you look at everything he's done for the Jew, you know, for Israel and the Jews, mm -hmm. the 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 Sitra Achra has to make him look like the opposite, mm -hmm. and he has to make the Jews believe that he's the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, some Jews don't believe it. A lot of Jews don't believe it, especially after October after October seventh. Mm -hmm. A lot of Jews still do, unfortunately. I don't know what the percentage is. Frank will argue less. I I argue. 50-50, I don't know. But uh, it has to be that way because you have a guy who moved the embassy to Jerusalem after all these presidents before him yes. promised to do so. Didn't matter their political mm -hmm. affiliation. He recognized the Golan Heights. Uh, this is like 25 years after the Israeli government was going to give it, God forbid, back to Syria. They still were considering that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how. Uh, he, he basically said that Judea and Samaria is not illegal. He he defunded every Palestinian entity on earth. He he fought anti-Semitism tooth and nail. He fought this all the stuff on campuses tooth and nail. You know, his daughter, he has like little Orthodox Jewish grandchildren children. Like he just went to the old hell. I mean, I, I, the, the, <laughs> yes. it's 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 absurd in a funny way, in a great way. So they must. Call him Hitler. With all those things, how do you how do you fight that? You can't fight that. You gotta call, you gotta call him Hitler. So Rabbi Kessin says, the Sitra or the other side, it, it must convince everybody that that you know the opposite of of reality. Mm -hmm.